Hey everybody, Keller Wortham coming to you here in the middle of this really, really crazy time. Uh, I'm thinking about all of you out there. I hope that you are doing everything you can to protect yourself and your families. Uh, now, I know a lot of you may know me as an actor. Uh, shout out to all the Jane the Virgin fans out there and un saludo para mi amigos y fans in Colombia. Uh, but a lot of you don't know that I'm actually a doctor as well. Yes, it is my, uh, my alter ego. And I can always tell at times like these that the level of social anxiety around a certain topic is, is escalated because I get a ton of texts and messages from my friends and family wanting to know how they should handle the situation. And in this particular case, I know a lot of you out there are concerned with the coronavirus, with what you can do to be protecting yourself and your family. So I figured um, I'd do this little video to answer one of the questions that I'm getting a lot from people, very frequently from friends and family, is regarding testing for the coronavirus. Should I be getting tested? Uh, and I thought I'd dive into some of the factors at play here uh, and let you guys know um, if you should be tested. So. Um, testing, as you may or may not know, is pretty scarce at the moment still, uh, but there are specific criteria that determine whether or not you can get tested in most uh, states and cities. So uh, the first thing that you need to know is that the test that currently exists is a coronavirus nucleic acid amplification test, or a PCR test. Now those are big fancy words, but basically they mean they are testing for the virus itself actively, which means that it's only gonna show if you have an active infection, not if you've had one in the past and recovered. And also, if they don't get a really good swab, then there's a chance you could get what is a false negative. And that basically means that the doctor comes and does the test and it shows that you don't have an infection when you actually could have one. As I said, that's called a false negative. Now, if you know someone who've had the, who's had the coronavirus test, you'll know that actually it's a nasal swab. It goes fairly far back into your nose. It can actually be quite uncomfortable. It certainly should be a little uncomfortable if they've done it right. And then it takes about four or five days for the results to come back. So not exactly the best situation for most people who are wanting to know right away if they have the virus. Thankfully, a new test is on the way out to physicians like myself and certainly urgent care and ER settings that will be able to give results much faster. But primarily right now, what you're looking at is about a four to five day turnaround to even find out if your test is positive. So that brings me to who should be getting tested. Well, cities and states have specific criteria, but here in LA, for example, you really only qualify for a test um, if you are over 65, uh, if you have underlying health conditions that could put you in a higher risk category, if you've known someone who's tested positive for coronavirus and had exposure to them, knowing them isn't enough, you actually have to have, have, to have exposure to them, um, or if you've been told by your physician to quarantine because of a sus suspected coronavirus infection and you still have at least a week of that quarantine period left. So lots of rules there. Um, if you have questions about whether or not you yourself would qualify, then I'm gonna put some links here. You can actually go uh, and, and fill out a questionnaire to see. But again, the main things are, are you 65 or over? Do you have um, health conditions that could put you in a higher risk? Have you been exposed to a known case of COVID-19? Or have you been told to quarantine by your physician, probably for some of the other reasons, um, and still have at least a week left of quarantine to go? So um, if you don't have symptoms, you don't need to be tested pretty much across the board unless you have a known exposure or an, and are in a high risk category. But for most of us, just uh, wanting to know doesn't qualify for a test. So sorry, all you curious people out there. You have to have more than that. The symptoms for coronavirus, which you probably know by now, are a high fever, usually above 100, a sore throat, and then a varying degree of shortness of breath, and then this thing that people are hearing about of loss of sense of smell. So if you have some of those symptoms, you can call your doctor and find out if you qualify. A lot of times, like in my office, you don't even need to come in to see the doctor. We can talk with you over the phone, see if you're meeting the criteria, and then sending you, uh, then we can send you off to a place that could you know, uh, provide the proper testing for you. A lot of places are doing tests in the ER and urgent cares. 
Um, some doctor's offices are doing testing. And then a lot of locales now have drive-through testing, which is great because it lowers your exposure to other people and also lowers those in the community to potential exposure from you if you're sick. Um, so again, I'll put some of those links, uh, but basically if you're having symptoms like um, sore throat and fever, then contact your doctor first. You don't necessarily need to leave your home to, to find out if you qualify for a test. That being said, if you are starting to have more serious side effects like shortness of breath, then you should go to an emergency room for proper testing there because they can also assess you and determine if you need more critical care. So um, just to sum up right now, the um, test that's most widely available is a PCR test for the actual coronavirus that's only gonna detect if you have an actual infection, not if you've had one in the past and recovered. Um, it's also not gonna tell you if you're immune to the infection or protected. Uh, and there is the risk of a false negative, meaning that the test does not catch the virus even if you have it. Thankfully, uh, there is a rapid test that's on the way out that's gonna allow us practitioners to give you results within five minutes. And third and lastly, uh, there is an antibody test in the works. Now this is different. This is not testing for the virus uh, DNA itself. It's actually testing for your antibodies against the virus. So that is a way to see if you've been exposed with the virus in the past and now have antibodies against it. A note though, that does not necessarily mean that you have immunity to the virus. Scientists are still trying to figure out if just having exposure in the past and making antibodies actually confers immunity or protects you moving forward. So a lot of questions still out there. Hopefully we'll get more answers as we move along, but I just wanted to share with you the answer to this one question I'm getting a lot. Uh, if you still have questions or wanna hear about something else, then you know, write me here and uh, I'll try to tackle them as, uh, as the days go by. All right, please do everything you can to take care of yourselves. Above all, socially isolate, wash your hands, and don't touch your face. Take care.